thank you for having me here in person. Um, so my hope is to um, give you some ideas of easy ways, that, easy things that you can do to improvise um, in church to make uh, hymn interludes or introductions to hymns or uh, even independent pieces. And I thought that a good way to do that might be to explore um, parallel intervals. And the, I've chosen three, parallel sixths, parallel thirds, and parallel fourths. And those are just the three that I've found to be most useful because parallel sevenths are kind of uh, grading after a while. And the same thing is true with parallel seconds. You know, Nobody wants to listen to that stuff. Um, and I find that parallel fifths are very similar to parallel fourths. So um, I, I think the fourths are easier. So that's what we're going to do. And um, I've got some guinea pigs who are willing to try these things out on the organ. So Stuart, would you like to go first? And um, Oh, what a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> a round of applause for Stuart. Um, so one of the pieces that I photocopied for you is the first page of um, Rosa Medra, the Vaughn Williams Chorale Prelude. And I don't know if you play this piece or not, but it's extremely useful for you know, all occasions, weddings, funerals, everything. And it's basically a whole lot of parallel sixths. And the hymn tune comes in just at the bottom of the page in the left hand. Um, but it's accompanied all the way through by parallel six in the, in the right hand, and then they switch. Um, so I thought this would be something that we can try to recreate uh, with a different hymn tune. Thus, I wrote out uh, St. Thomas Williams, the hymn tune, uh, on another page. And I put it in C major, not because I think anybody should sing it in this key, but just because I think it's a, a, an easy place to start, is to do something in C major, and then you can transpose it into other keys. So I'm going to ask Stuart um, uh, if he would take his left hand and just play parallel six going up and down. And uh, he can turn around whenever he wants. If he's going down and he decides, <laughs> not, not like that. <laughs> So if, he, if he's going down and he decides, OK, I'm ready to go back up again, then he can do that. Yeah, so he's just staying diatonically in C major, all the white notes. Um, beautiful. All right, so um, sh shall we put the hymn tune in the right hand this time? We'll Which hymn tune? Um, no, the uh, the one I wrote out, St. Thomas Williams. Oh. So it's the. So it just keeps on doing this. Yeah. So it you don't have to. The nice thing about this strategy is you don't have to worry about what the harmony is. Um, if you hit something that's not in the chord, the next note will be in the chord. <laughs> so it can be in you know in a pagatura or a passing tone. Nice. Yeah. yeah. You might actually find it easier if you do two, if you do eighth notes in the, in, with the, your left hand, because then your right hand is moving more slowly. And so you'll have more time to think. Do you want to just, just try the first line like that? So, uh, two in the left hand. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's exactly it. You don't need to do the whole hymn tune if you don't want. Um, so uh, if we, let's switch our hands, just like Von Williams does at the beginning of the uh, uh, piece here. He'll have the sixths in the right hand and then the hymn tune in the left hand. So let's try switching hands and see how that works, all right? Same. Exactly the same, yeah. Try it again. We, it's hard to keep it straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, to play with your left hand, it is, yeah. Um, no, but you did, you did great. That was, that was great. Uh, so then I thought, um, you know, Von Williams has a, a, a pedal part that's, that's just these sort of quarter notes that punctuate. Bum, bum. Um, so let's add a pedal part to this. And, you know, Stuart, you can you can use the pedal part from the hymn tune, and it usually works really well. Um, or you can improvise something that's, that's more simple than that. Like if you want to do just one note for, for each measure, that. So the melody is going to be in the pedal? No, no, no. The, um, the bass part is going to be in the pedal. Ah, okay. um, I, you know, you could put the melody in the left hand or the right hand, whatever makes you more comfortable. But basically, I just want to add a pedal part to what we've been doing. Yeah. No, that was really good. That was really nice. Um, yeah, so he's already starting to sound a bit like um, Von Williams. And it, I, <laughs> not exactly like Von Williams, so but, but a lot like Von <laughs> No, what I love about the Parallel Six is it gives you some really interesting harmonies that you probably wouldn't play if you were trying to um, uh, harmonize the melody in a traditional way. You know, you'll get these funky chords that resolve and stuff. And I think that's really nice. Um, let's, uh, let's try it, it with the melody in the pedal this time. Can we do that? Um, so this is actually, in some ways, easier because you can play the sixths with two hands rather than one hand. Does that you, make it twelfths? You can do. <laughs> you can just okay. do that, right? Okay. And I'm going to put a four foot stop in the pedal, so like that, maybe.
go. Nice, nice job. <laughs> yeah, so um, what I try to think about when I'm doing this is whichever direction the, the melody is going, I try to have my accompaniment go the opposite direction. And that way you avoid accidentally playing the melody with the accompaniment, you know? So there's, you know, like all those rules that you learn in theory class about the parallel fifths and parallel octaves. If you're just, if you're going the opposite way, then there's no way you can possibly break any of those rules. So um, it's just an easy way to get around that. Um, nice. Now, you were already kind of doing the next one, uh, and, and that is, to add a little prelude or a little introduction before you bring in the hymn tune. And, and also, you can do an interlude before each uh, phrase of the hymn. So you were already doing this, but would you like to try that once again with, uh, with intention of doing it? And if, Stuart, if you want to put the um, melody back in the hands, that's fine. Okay, so you, you just did a beautiful introduction. Oh. And then, so after the first phrase, we'll have um, a, an interlude. And now give the melody a rest. I love that he keeps going when he makes mistakes, you know? And you just think, oh, that was kind of an interesting <laughs> harmony. And, it, you know, it, sometimes it's better than what you would have done if you had been intending to do it, you know? Um, so really nice. Uh, were there other people who wanted to play? Is it Tom? Tom. Would you like to play or? OK, let's, let's, let's switch. I've been fired. You've been fired. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so, thank you very much. Um, I should give you a class. Yes, I remember you, yeah. I, yeah, I remember your periodic phrases. Yes. They were really great, yeah. Um, so I thought I would ask you to try um, thirds. And I don't know, do, do, do many people practice thirds um, on the piano? Yeah. Um, you know, in, in a scale you have, of course, seven notes, and so you have a group of three and then a group of four. So whichever scale you're trying to play in thirds, you have to do, you know, one, two, three, and then switch to the next position, one, two, three, four. Um, and for each scale, of course, it's in a different place because the black notes are in different places. So um, you have to figure out where each one is. But just, I find that very helpful to know that, okay, this is my group of three and this is my group of four. Do you, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Um, so would you mind um, uh, trying the same hymn tune, but we'll have thirds in the left hand and the melody in the right hand. And if you feel comfortable enough to add a pedal part, that would be great. Okay. But if not, that's perfectly fine too. Did, did Stuart cancel the organ? The solos, um, I think he was using that. And I don't know, just a flute or something? Okay. You have a couple, just um, I don't know. <laughs> I'll add something if it's not loud enough.
very nice. Yeah. And yeah, you do. <laughs> you can end with a different interval. We'll, we'll allow that. Um, but uh, um, what Tom was doing is um, not necessarily going all the way up scales, but sometimes going da 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 da, da and just hovering around the same notes, which which is easy and it sounds quite good too because it it's, uh, gives your ear a break from just the constant scales. So I really liked that. Um, so I thought I would ask you. We've been doing eighth notes, basically. So two notes in the accompaniment against every one note in the melody. And so I thought I would ask Tom to do three notes in the accompaniment um, for every quarter note in the melody. So if you go, one, two, three, one, two, three, da, da, like that. You have a two against three. <laughs> oh no, you can't you can't avoid the two against threes. That's the best part. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. And like I say, I love, I love the two against threes right. and when yeah. you do that, you know? Um, okay, so now let's try, you can slow this one down if you want, but let's try four notes in the accompaniment. So you're going to be playing 16th notes in your left hand uh, while you do quarter notes in your right hand. And like I say, if you want, you can slow the hymn tune down. So you're playing the, the thirds actually kind of at the same tempo, but the the hymn tune is going slower, you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You have to count internally. One, two, three, four. One. Yeah. Um, okay. So then the next um, thing that you might do is uh, to change keys. And I like to um, sometimes go up by minor thirds. I think that makes a nice sequence. So I'll go up from um, from C major. The next key I'd play it in would be E flat, and then F sharp, and then A. But another strategy, which is what I'm going to ask you to do, is um, we could go through the circle of fifths. So we could play the hymn tune once in C major, and then go down a fifth and play it again in F major. And if you're not comfortable doing that, I, I completely understand. But would you like to just play the, the end of this um, uh, hymn tune, and then uh, go straight to F major, and start it in F major, and you don't have to play the whole thing if you don't want to. Now you can start on that note, and you just have to remember to play B flats. (laughs) 
So now, no. now you're in C major, yeah. So what you would do is you would start on the C. Start on this key. Yeah. Think of it as. Where are you going? Where would you go? Uh, up to F. Oh, so I'm, I'm just okay. transposing this to F major. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I you want to give that a try? If could. You could just, ju why don't you just do the first phrase of it? Um, okay. And in the left hand, the, the most important thing is you have to remember the B flats, you know. Yeah. That was good, yeah. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. Yeah, keep going. Anything goes in this harmony world. Nice job at the transposing. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Yeah, so, and you don't even need to cadence between the verses. You could just go straight from one key to the next, and um, it, uh, it'll make it continuous. You know, like you could have, do a B section in F major and then go back to C and have a return, you know, to the original key, <clears throat> like that. Uh, looking at my other ideas here. <laughs> oh. Can I skip down? Um, one of my other thoughts was um, you could break up the intervals. So there's no reason you need to play thirds like this. You could do, you could break them up like that. Do, would you like to try that once? Um, yeah, it's probably easier in C, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yes. Now I'm transposed. And this one might be easier. Why don't you switch hands? Try switching hands and having the, yeah. Yeah, that might be better. So we're going to do I can move it down the outfit, yes? Yeah, of course. It's your pace. Nice. I like the end. Okay. Um, can I ask you to try one more thing before sure. you go? <laughs> Let's put the melody in the pedal. And that'll be up your left hand to do whatever you want. So you'll have the thirds in your right hand, and then you can do some kind of a funky bass line with your, I'm thinking kind of um, like maybe. Um, manual? Yeah. Okay. It almost doesn't matter what note you play. You know what I mean? But you're keeping the thirds in the right hand. Yeah, I was keeping the thirds in the right hand. Third as thirds or any way I want to play? Uh, the broken thirds? Yeah. Let's keep the broken thirds.
It's harder to have harder the melody in the pedal. The yeah. yeah. Much easier. Because we, we actually don't do that very often, really, do we? That's Unless true. Unless you do it like an arpeggiated thing with the chords. Yeah. The yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it's true. It's, it's more rare. That's harder to do. Okay. Something to work on. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. And Debbie, do you mind volunteering last? <laughs> so I, I was going to ask um, Debbie to play fourths. And um, there, there is a wonderful piece by Dupre that I copied the first page of in here that, that's nothing but fourths. Um, do you, does anybody play this, the carillon of Dupre? No. Oh, but I get it. Yeah? Yeah. Do you want to sight read it for oh, us? No, yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, so let's, um, should we start with the um, fourth in the left hand and play the melody with our right hand? And this will give you a, yeah. Oh yeah, of course, you can do anything you want. That's a, actually a really good idea. She said, can you repeat the notes? And, and it's, oh. a, it's a really good idea. <laughs> could do that. Just twice. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, make a motive out of whatever interval you're using. Yeah, in fact, if you want to do that, you're... <laughs> and I think he had... He had the crumb horn here, so if you want to make the melody there. Uh, but I'm trying to harmonically go to a place with the fourths that works. Uh, <laughs> you, you actually really don't need to think about that so okay. much, I don't think. You know? yeah. Maybe on the last note you want to end with yeah, a C right. on the top. Yeah. Concentration. We don't play fourths as we often as we play yeah, thirds right. and sixths, yeah. do we? Yeah. But it, it gives it kind of a more modern sound, doesn't it? It's a, it's a ho more hollow sound, I guess, or something. Yeah, it's, it's um, spare. It's austere. Yeah. Yeah. Um, would you like to try it in the right hand? It might be easier, actually, to do the fourths in the right hand. You, you also might try Exactly, yeah. yeah. You, just... you can get away with m mistakes. <laughs> You're doing great.
There it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, so then I'm, we're going to take one more step. Um, and that is, um, you can do this with any of the intervals, but um, try using the, the same interval in the right hand that you've got in the left hand. So if you're playing parallel fourths in your left hand, try the hymn tune with, um, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, would you break them? Would you do them in two different textures? I mean, you like, certainly could. It might, it might be easier since it's your first time trying it to, to play them together, but if you want to try them broken, that's fine. Yeah, that's, that's not easy to do. That's, that's really very difficult. Yeah. Nice job. Uh, yeah, but uh, I found it weird because when you change directions on yeah. all of a sudden you're going fifths. Oh, yeah, I, I find it more difficult to think of it like that. I think of it as playing a f this yeah. fourth and then the next yeah, right. fourth. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but I suppose if playing fifths makes you if it's easier to think about it that way, then there's no reason you shouldn't yeah, do that. Yeah, but, but, but that, that's cool. Yeah. I'm gonna do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and um, I'm gonna ask you to do one more thing, actually. Um, and that is, um, so, um, to make a canon, and I'm not gonna ask you to play the fourths while you play the canon, but if you, <laughs> could, could you try a canon between the pedal and your right hand. So start, yeah, start with the pedal. Yeah. <laughs> she, she's amazing. Great. Okay, can I add fourths while you do that? Oh, please do. I'm going to play them really loudly in case you make a mistake. I'll cover you up. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> or it's going to be too loud. Huh? So. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> 
really, really nice job. Yeah, that was great. I'll let you go. Thank you, Debbie, very much. It's not easy to just sit down and play a canon like that. Um, yeah, so I, um, I mean, I, you have this. I think I wrote down all the thoughts that I just, um, that I just talked about. And I thought I would try to um, demonstrate some of them myself and um, uh, play a little bit. Um, so uh, let's see. Oh, I, th I thought I would use the hymn tune, um, Praise to the Lord, the Almighty. Um, uh, and I'm going to try to demonstrate as many of these things as I can uh, it, in a few variations. And I forgot my organ shoes. <laughs> You will hear lots of scales. <laughs> Jason, have you yeah. ever had anybody have a brain scan while they're doing what that? What um, you just did? Yeah, because Tom and I were just conversing. That would be fascinating, yeah. wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. I would love to see what the brain looks like. Well, in some cases, the brain wouldn't be working at all. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> All right, I'll play the hymn first.
tried to fit in as many of those things as I could. <laughs> I, um, yeah. More, more often than I'd like to admit. <laughs> I forget my shoes a lot. <laughs> oh, I was also going to say, um, you could use these things for, um, for an interlude in a hymn um, quite easily. And I, I'll just show you quickly what I mean. Like, like what I was just doing, um, uh, if you had the hymn like, uh, um, fourths as a as an interlude like that or the sixth would work um, really well too is my time up <laughs> uh, the sixth would work too if it was a softer sort of hymn you know So the, um, I just wanted to make the point, it's not just about making an independent piece with these um, sort of ideas. You could make an, an interlude or an, a hymn introduction with them too. So, um, all right, were there any other questions? Good, that means I've explained everything extremely clearly. <laughs> and, <laughs> I, I didn't hear. No, it's just Oh, no. You don't want to hear that again. Isn't that trumpet so loud? It, 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 I mean, it's not as loud as it feels when it's isolated. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, all right. Well, that's all I have to say then. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for having me.